Hello, students. Today, you will learn about a fascinating topic, red light therapy and its impact on our eyes. From eye health to vision improvements, we're covering it all. Have you ever wondered if those red light devices you see online actually work? We are here with the research postulates of Dr. Joseph J. Allen to provide you with the best and accurate knowledge. Well, stay tuned as we break down the science research and safety of red light therapy for the eyes. Let's get started. Dr. Joseph J. Allen is a renowned expert in the field of ophthalmology, specializing in advanced treatments and therapies for eye health. With extensive experience in research and clinical practice, Dr. Allen is known for his contributions to the understanding of retinal conditions, including macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. His work spans the application of innovative therapies such as red light therapy to enhance visual outcomes and improve overall eye health. His research focuses on the effects of light wavelengths on cellular function and health, particularly in relation to eye conditions and vision improvement. Dr. Allen's work has contributed significantly to understanding how red light therapy can benefit eye health reduce inflammation, and promote healing. His research postulates provide valuable insights into the science behind red light therapy, making him a trusted authority in the field. Light. So first, what is red light therapy and how does it work? This type of therapy has been particularly popular in dermatology for promoting collagen formation, treating acne, and stimulating hair growth in individuals with alopecia. So red light therapy also goes by a few other names, such as low-level light therapy or even photobiomodulation, is where we use low-level wavelengths of red light to treat various health conditions. And this is primarily used to promote healing, as well as reduce inflammation and to alleviate pain. Red light therapy works by emitting low-level red wavelengths of light that penetrate the skin and are absorbed by cells. This light energy is converted into cellular energy, which can enhance cell function, improve blood circulation, reduce inflammation, and promote healing. The increased cellular activity can help repair damaged tissues and reduce pain. The science behind it involves activating cellular mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, resulting in increased production of adenosine triphosphate, this energy boost is crucial for cellular function and repair. The unique property of red light therapy is its ability to penetrate deep into tissues without causing excessive heat, which could otherwise damage cells. Additionally, this therapy enhances antioxidant activity and reduces inflammation, both of which are vital for maintaining eye health. The first big way that red light therapy is being shown to be helpful for the eye has to do with retinal conditions, primarily people who have macular degeneration or diabetes. In fact, red light or low level light therapy has already been approved and used as a treatment for age-related macular degeneration in both Europe and Latin America. With Dr. Allen points out that red light therapy is gaining traction for its potential benefits in retinal health. Various publications indicate that red light therapy can decrease the size and volume of drusen, which is a protein buildup at the back of the eye characteristic of macular degeneration. Moreover, it has been shown to slow the progression of geographic atrophy, which is the severe end stage of dry macular degeneration. Patients undergoing this therapy have reported improvements in visual acuity, color vision, and contrast sensitivity. This is a significant breakthrough, as it offers a potential solution for a condition that often leads to legal blindness and for which limited treatments are available. When it comes to diabetic retinopathy, red light therapy offers another layer of hope. Research in this area is ongoing, and while some studies suggest that red light therapy may help improve retinal function and reduce inflammation associated with diabetic retinopathy, its effectiveness and safety are still being evaluated. Because diabetes not only can lead to bleeding within the eye, but it can lead to a swelling of the retinal tissue that we call diabetic macular edema. Diabetic macular edema, a common complication of diabetes. This condition is traditionally treated with injections directly into the eye, a procedure many patients find daunting. 
Diabetic macular edema is different from diabetic retinopathy as the former causes central vision loss due to macular damage, while the later affects entire retina and can cause both peripheral and central vision issues. Red light therapy helps in diabetic macular edema by reducing inflammation and promoting cellular repair. The red light penetrates the eye tissues, stimulating mitochondrial activity in retinal cells. This process can improve blood flow, decrease fluid accumulation, and reduce retinal swelling, potentially preserving or enhancing vision. Additionally, the anti-inflammatory effects of red light therapy may help to manage the underlying inflammation associated with diabetic macular edema. So yeah, just based off of this info alone, red light gets me really excited. Another area that red light therapy is being used is in treatment for dry eye disease. Red light therapy is being investigated for its benefits in treating dry eye disease. This therapy can be used alone or in conjunction with other treatments, such as intense pulse light therapy. Red light therapy can benefit dry eye syndrome by stimulating the meibomian glands in the eyelids, which are responsible for producing the oily layer of the tear film. The primary mechanism here involves the deep penetration of red light, which stimulates the oil glands in the eyes to produce better quality oils. The therapy helps reduce inflammation and improves gland function, leading to better quality and stability of tears. This can alleviate symptoms such as dryness, irritation, and discomfort. Additionally, red light therapy promotes cellular repair and reduces oxidative stress, further contributing to eye health. In fact, red light therapy has even been evaluated for the treatment of chalazions or eyelid styes that had previously not been responsive to other forms of treatment, with one study reporting a 92% effective treatment for chalazion within just two treatments. Red light therapy can help in the treatment of chalazions by reducing inflammation and promoting healing. Chalazions are small, swollen lumps on the eyelid caused by blocked oil glands. The red light penetrates the skin, which can help reduce swelling and accelerate the natural healing process. Additionally, red light therapy's anti-inflammatory effects can alleviate pain and discomfort associated with chalazions. This highlights the potential of red light therapy as a versatile tool in eye care. The last really cool area of research on red light in the eyes has to do with slowing down the development of myopia or nearsightedness in children. According to Dr. Joseph J. Allen, red light therapy is being researched as a potential treatment to reduce myopia or nearsightedness. This therapy uses low-level red wavelengths of light that penetrate the skin and tissues, reaching the retinal cells when applied to the eyes. The red light is absorbed by the mitochondria in these cells, boosting their energy production and enhancing overall cell function and health. Red light therapy also promotes better blood circulation, delivering more oxygen and nutrients to the retinal tissues, which supports eye health. Additionally, its anti-inflammatory effects can benefit various eye conditions. Myopia often results from the elongation of the eyeball, causing light to focus in front of the retina instead of on it. A 2023 meta-analysis revealed that daily use of a desktop red light LED device can reduce myopia progression by 0.68 diopters within six months of daily use. This leads to a slowing down of axial length or elongation of the eyeball by about 0.35 millimeters. This therapy involves children looking at the red light device for just three minutes twice a day. By enhancing retinal cell function and health, red light therapy might help maintain proper signaling between the retina and the brain, impacting visual development and the progression of myopia. Unfortunately, we have really no idea of how red light therapy may be in fact working to help slow down myopia. One of the best theories out there is that perhaps there's a lack of oxygen in the back of the eye and that's helping change the formation of collagen within the sclera and that perhaps red light is improving the amount of oxygen and blood flow to the retina in the back of the eye and that may slow down this whole process. But again, 
There's a lot of theories, but we really just don't know yet. While preclinical studies have shown promising results and initial clinical trials in humans are encouraging, more extensive research is needed to confirm these findings and establish standardized treatment protocols. The optimal wavelength, intensity, and duration of red light therapy for myopia are still being determined and safety remains a priority. Combining red light therapy with other myopia management strategies could enhance its effectiveness. Despite the promising results, red light therapy for the eyes is still a new field, and we don't fully understand the long-term effects. Red light therapy is generally considered safe for various therapeutic applications, but when it comes to using red light therapy for the eyes, there are specific safety concerns that need to be addressed. First thing to understand is that this red light therapy is all still very new science, especially for the eyes. And we don't really understand the short-term or long-term consequences of this red light exposure. And this goes for not just the eye, but for parts of the brain as well. And remember the retina in the eye is just an extension of your brain. And we're a little concerned about the possible long-term consequences of what this could be doing to those delicate nerve cells. Prolonged or intense exposure to red light could potentially harm the retina. Ensuring the correct wavelength and intensity is crucial to avoid retinal damage. Excessive light exposure might lead to phototelic reactions, causing damage to the eye tissues. The safety of red light therapy depends on using the appropriate wavelength, usually between 600 to 700 nanometer for red light and intensity. Incorrect settings can lead to adverse effects. Limiting the duration of exposure is essential to prevent potential harm. Prolonged exposure increases the risk of eye damage. There is limited long-term data on the effects of red light therapy on the eyes. Ongoing research aims to establish the long-term safety and efficacy of red light therapy for ocular treatments. Repeated exposure over time may have cumulative effects, which are not yet fully understood. And there's a possible chance that that red light could cause short or long-term damage to the retina in the back of the eye. And again, I don't want anyone to hurt themselves by trying this out. While the benefits of red light therapy are compelling, safety remains a critical concern. Dr. Allen emphasizes that this therapy is still in its infancy, especially concerning eye treatments. The retina is an extension of the brain, making it particularly sensitive to any form of light exposure. There are many red light devices available on the market, but most are not designed specifically for the eyes and may not have the correct wavelength or power density. This mismatch can potentially cause short-term or long-term damage to the retina. Moreover, recent studies indicate that some devices used in myopia studies on children already exceed the safety limits for maximal light exposure. And currently, red light therapy is not FDA approved for the treatment of any eye diseases in the US as of yet. But there is currently at least one red light device going through FDA trials, specifically for the treatment of macular degeneration, and that's from a company called Lumathera. And honestly, looking at that research, I think it looks really promising, and it's a strong likelihood that we're probably gonna see that FDA approved within the next year or so. But again, this is all still very new in the area of eye care. And there you have it. Red light therapy holds great potential for eye health, but it's essential to approach it with caution and stay informed about the latest research. We have covered the potential of red light therapy, from treating acnes, alleviating diabetic retinopathy, and reducing the risk of myopia in children. Dr. Allen says that researchers are still going on to unlock more benefits of red light therapy. What do you think about red light therapy for the eyes? Have you tried it or are considering it? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more eye health tips and updates. Thank you for joining us today on this journey to understanding the potential of red light therapy with Dr. Joseph J. Allen. If you enjoy these types of videos, let us know in the comments so we can bring you more of it. And also make sure to check our previous video on how to improve your eyesight naturally. And remember, if you have any specific questions or topics you'd like us to cover, leave them in the comments. 
We're here to help you understand and navigate the world of eye care. Stay safe and take care. Until next time, goodbye.